Yo, you know what I just realized? I just opened up my uh, my little request book here, and I just realized that we have another we have another classic Ja Rule Eminem beef track on this list. So roll it. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Channel's name is The Third Ernest. I'm Ernest Adiano The Third. Y'all guys, third family. If you're new here and you're not subscribed and you like what you see at the end of the video, consider becoming part of this little family. Clicking the subscribe button, bottom right hand corner. Now, as you may know, if you saw the last video reaction that I did when I did the Hail Mary disc that had 50 Eminem and Busta, like I, I was, I came up in my adolescence and my teenage years were like in the middle of the prime, like right in the middle of the Shady Records and Murder Inc. Jaw Rule. 50 Cent, Benzino, Eminem, like beef that was going on. One of the most iconic beefs of all of rap. I would probably say the second biggest beef in all of rap right behind Tupac and Biggie. So you can see it in my face in that other video, which I'll link somewhere, probably leave it down in the description below or at the end card at the end of this video. But you can clearly see the excitement on my face as, as I'm like trying to, as I'm trying to explain what was going on within the song to people that don't really know anything about the beef or, or younger, a, young, a younger generation that wasn't old enough yet to know that the beef was even happening. So I was mad excited for that. And then I was just looking through this book here, which is where I keep all my reactions that I have to do for people who request it on Patreon. And I saw that we have Bully by Jonathan Irizari. I want to say it's pronounced or Lozari, Lorizari. My handwriting is so fucked up, I can't even read it. But Jonathan done requested Bully by Eminem. So Jonathan, I appreciate it. All the other Patreons, I appreciate it. But Bully is one of the stronger diss tracks. Definitely one of the stronger diss tracks on the shitty record side to the point where like, when you listen to it, you're like, God damn. The beef with MGK, Kill Shot, Rap Devil, this is, that was nothing. That was nowhere near as personal as this beef was. So I'm fucking excited. Let's just hop on right on into it. Follow your boy on Instagram and on Twitter at the third earnest, just like the channel. The links are down in the description below. And we got Bully by Eminem. If I'm not mistaken, this one is toward Ja Rule and Benzino together. Let's get it. I haven't heard this song in prop always as soon as I start talking. I haven't heard this song in probably eight, 10 years. I forgot how hard this beat goes. Just that eh, 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 like that piano note, dog. And then just remembering it slow. It's fire. I'm with holding my hand up the wire. Though I'd like to be the strength of this punk ass little pussy's puny neck. It's my right to insist that he acknowledge my existence, but he just displays complete lack of respect. Dog, I forgot how fire the flow is. It's not even like an angry type of flow. It's not even like a, it's not even like I'm mad that he said this shit about my daughter. It's not even like I'm mad the disrespect that I get. It's a melodic style flow, but he, it's, a, it's a diss. He said, I'm withholding my anger. Although deep down, I'd like to be the one that fucking chokes out this dude with this puny ass little neck, this fucking, this fucking pussy. 2020 fucking, this is why beef doesn't matter anymore in 2020. Because first off, there's really no Nobody for Eminem to beef with that was at the level or had the success that he did back when in like he did in the 2000s. Jaw Rule was a pretty fucking big deal in 20 in the early 2000s. And Murder Inc. was a pretty big label like they were on they were just on top of the game as much as Aftermath Records was and I honestly don't know if there's anybody else that's out there that could that could produce such a diss. It just doesn't feel like diss tracks have as much of an impact because there's not as much there's not as much at stake as there used to be. I, I have the right to ask for my existence to be noticed to be recognized because I'm the fucking god around here. It's my right to insist that he acknowledge my existence, but he just displays complete lack of respect. That's what he says to himself as he uses magazines to trash me as he sits with both his feet up at his desk. Smokes a bag of his weed and starts imagining things and he just can't see that he's manically depressed. <laughs> Yo, man, it's so, it's so fucking petty and it's so dope. I actually, I, I don't think he's talking about Ja Rule right here. I'm pretty sure he's talking about Benzino. He uses magazines to trash me. And one of the like founders of Murder, Inc. was also the founder of the Source Magazine. And Eminem has clearly had a longstanding beef with Source Magazine, never giving him the respect that he deserves. And he sits with both his feet up at his desk, just saying shit in the magazine, trying to trash me. And he can't see that he's manically depressed. He just starts imagining things and he just can't see that he's manically depressed. 
And in his jealousy and envy It just whirls him in a frenzy As he turns on MTV and sees my face He don't exist in this world So he just twists and he twirls Spirals and spins till he hurls himself into rage so fire you hear him like crumbling up like the magazine paper in the background and like pissed off dude that's that's a dope ass ad lib dope ass effect right there but this is like eminem not dissing he's not like dissing who he's talking about he's like just he's like dissing him instead of directly at him he's dissing him with the observations that he's making of him like you can see this motherfucker's jealousy and rage and envy every time he turns on the tv and he's forced to see my face because i'm the fucking superstar around here i run shit and he's nowhere near the level of success i have and that makes him mad but yo, just the genius of this diss is the fact that he's not like, he doesn't have the aggression of a diss like he did back in the Hail Mary. It's very, it's very light, but what he's saying is still very potent. Spirals and spins till he hurls himself into rage. And it's destroying him slowly because he does not even know me. Even though he sees me everywhere he goes. <laughs> so he just tortures himself. He has no fortune and wealth. So he extorts someone else to get his dough. Yo, dog. It's such a fucking clean line. Like, yo. He's destroying himself because he can't, he can't, he can't escape me. Like, I'm so big. I'm such a big factor in this rap game, in the music industry, in the world right now at this time. That, like, even if he wanted to escape me, even if he wanted to escape the thing that's causing his depression and his anger, which is me, he can't. It's destroying him because he doesn't even know me, but he sees me everywhere that he goes. Like, God, that's dope. And now he's acting like a bully, so he tries to push and pull me, but he knows that he can't fool me, so he's mad. He has no choice but to scream and raise his voice up at me Cause it annoys him to see that I ain't scared You ain't no motherfucking bully Now I ain't balancing the motherfucking bully God, the hook, the ho everything about this song is fire. I forgot all about like how melodically pleasing it is. He tries to push and pull me, but he knows he cannot fool me. So at the end of the day, he's just fucking mad and he has no choice but to scream because it annoys him to see that I ain't scared. And I'm not that weak of a personality that I'm going to bite for every single fucking piece of every single piece of bait that you try to put in my face. Like I got more composure than that. And that makes you mad. Killing them with kindness type vibe, you know? I won't allow it, ain't gon' cower to no bully I'll be damned if I don't stand up to a bully Fight like a man and throw my hands up to a bully And I know it must be fucking with you emotionally Fire The hook is dope as fuck, the hook is good Super good. And what's dope about the hook is that it's le it's way more aggressive than the verses are. The verses are very melodic and the hook is very like, you know, he's kind of like, you can hear the anger in his voice when normally it's the opposite. Normally the anger is was within the verses and then the melodic portion is within the hook. So that's dope, just that, that backwards nature of the track. Now I'm not trying to make no more enemies, no more unfortunately. There's so many other motherfuckers that just are. They just keep hounding at me now that I'm down with 50. Suddenly now I got beef with this faggot jaw. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> It kills me that like in 2020, this 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 wouldn't even be possible because of how many low blows and, and homophobic jokes that are being made. He just called Ja Rule a faggot. Like he, Eminem got beef like what, three, four years ago for, for saying the word faggot in one of his songs. Like everybody was like, oh my God, we're not past using the word faggot. And like Eminem's not past that. He's a 40 year old man or whatever the fuck they were saying. But like back then he was just throwing it around so carelessly. It's crazy how much times have changed. But he's like, they just keep pounding at me because I'm down with 50 and I'll all of a sudden I got beef with Ja Rule. Like the beef was just between 50 Cent and Ja Rule at first. And then Eminem got drug into it. And basically, if you want to think about it, like in terms of World War II, like 50 Cent and Ja Rule were Germany and the rest of the world battling it out with each other. And then here comes fucking Japan all of a sudden, crash lands into Pearl Harbor, awaking the sleeping giant. Eminem would be Pearl Harbor in this instance. Eminem is the United States stepping in and be like, yo, we're, we're going to drop two bombs. Just letting you know. If you don't quit, they don't quit. Boom, two bombs, and then war's over. That's Eminem, basically. Now I got beef with this faggot job. <laughs> but his ass is such a puppet. Or could shove his whole hand up it and just make him say what he wants him to say. But Shook has Irv on a string, and Irv's so nervous that he says anything to this man to keep him at bay. Dog, and then 
and he brings Irv Gotti into it and talking about his like his fear of Suge Knight. Like Eminem just so casually like it's like just effortlessly brings in somebody else into the beef, which I mean Irv Gotti was obviously a part of the beef originally, but he was like he was definitely a pawn in this whole thing where Ja Rule and Benzino were the main were the main characters in the whole shit. But he just like, casually brings Irv Gotti and how and how he's scared of Suge Knight, dog. That's crazy. Anything to this man to keep him at bay. So now Ja thinks that he's so soft and murder ain't the big bad wolf and they go off and puff and blow our label down. But our building's made out of bricks, so you ain't taking out shit and no, all. You just did a song with Bobby Brown. <laughs> Yo, and then you just did a song with Bobby Brown. If I'm not mistaken, uh, Murder Inc. signed Bobby Brown. For, uh, maybe I'm, maybe I have that incorrect. Somebody let me know. Murder Inc. They had very love, they had very love-centered tracks. Like most of the major hits that came out of Murder Inc. were all around singing. Were all around like sing-songy rap and and spilling your emotions to a female about whatever you feel about them. Eminem is just basically saying like, bro, you don't even compare to us. Y'all aren't even real rappers. Like us over here at Shady Records, we are fucking MCs. We are rappers first and foremost. You're over there making songs with fucking Bobby Brown. You ain't taking out shit and all. You just did a song with Bobby Brown. So now you try to pull the race card and it backfires in your face hard. Cause you know we don't play that black and white shit. Plus the stylist you fuck when you was ecstasy up was just a man who's dressed up as a white bitch. You ain't no motherfucking holy. Duh. Man. I cannot believe that he said that like back in the back in those days, dog. That would never fly in 2020. This is why this is like I said, will never be anywhere near as potent as they are or as they were back then because you can't dig deep into somebody's fucking core like that anymore. You can't say shit like that anymore. He's basically talking about Benzino first when he says you tried to pull the race card and it backfired in your face hard because we don't play that black and white shit. This is back when Eminem, this is back when they pulled the, uh, they pulled that one track. I forget the name of it that Eminem did, Old Foolish Pride Girl. Anyway, where he was talking about black girls are stupid, black girls are dumb whenever he got his heart broken by that black chick. So when that came out, they tried to, they tried to use that against Eminem. That was really their only piece that was really their only piece that they could even use against him, and it backfired because nobody really gave a fuck because Eminem apologized. He's like, yo, this is what happened. This is why I said that. I was at a bad time in my life, and that's not fucking me. But then he goes on to say that the stylist you fucked while you were ecstasied up was just a man who's dressed up as a white bitch. Basically saying that he fucked the dude while he was on ecstasy, talking about Ja Rule. Because supposedly DMX had like heard a tape or had heard something where the stylist, who was obviously a, a homosexual, that the stylist was talking about how Ja Rule fucked him while they were while they were high. So DMX said that and Eminem is just bringing that into this beef like, yo, like how are you gonna pull the race card when that male stylist that you fucked was just a dude dressed up as a white chick? Like just that way of taking like the racial, the racial card that they try to use against him and say like, yo, we don't care about race just as much as you don't care about race because you're the one that fucked this dude that was dressed up like a white chick. Fuck dog, I forgot all about that. Bro, this diss right here low key might be harder than, than the Hail Mary diss. Cause the Hail Mary this is dope because of like the concept of of bringing Tupac's Tupac's flow Tupac's beat to talk shit who's trying to be to talk shit about the dude who's trying to be the next Tupac like that that's all clever within itself but straight up talking shit this one is crazy 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 fight like a man throw my hands up to a bully. you must be taking too much. Now what bothers me the most about hip hop is we so close to picking up where we left off with Big and Pac. We just lost Jam, SJ, Big L got blasted away, plus we lost Bugs, Snake Tongue, and Freaky Ty. Dog, anybody that says that Eminem is not a student of the game or doesn't have love for the game, just the fact that he's saying this line in this last verse. He's like, what bothers me the most about hip hop right now, back in 2000, whatever this song was written, probably like 2000 four maybe oh five but he's basically saying like what bothers me the most about the game today is that we're so close to picking up where we left off with biggie and pot like we are almost to the point where all of these fucking beefs are gonna come to a head and someone's gonna end up getting killed not only that we lost jam master j big l got blasted away big l was shot and he was big l for those that don't know he could easily if he was alive went down as the best rapper of all time 
Easily. We lost potentially a top five rapper when Big L was killed. It's like a never ending cycle that just seems to come full circle. Everybody's gotta be so fucking hard. Mm. And I'm not excluding myself because I've been stupid as well. I've been known to lose it when someone says something smart. Like, why does everybody gotta be so fucking hard for? Why do why do we gotta why do we gotta hang on to our pride so much that we're willing to lose artists? We're willing to lose fellow brothers in the hip hop game. Like, is your pride worth that? Is your pride worth losing Tupac and Biggie? And he said it's like a never ending cycle. It just keeps it just seems to come full circle. Like we lost Tupac and Biggie, then it was all good, and then now we're coming around with Eminem and Murder Inc. and the beef with them, and then it's all good, and then we're coming around with Jay Z and and Nas, and then you know like the beasts were just cyclical just keep on happening and he's like i'm not excluded from this message as well like i know that i need to work on myself and i knew i know i need to get better because i've been known to pop off when someone says something smart or or i just been known to have a petty side which obviously eminem in, in 03 02 probably at the at the fucking peak of his pettiness but as we grow as men we learn to let shit go but then again there's only so much bullshit we can really stand ah. We all got reps to uphold when someone steps on our toes. It's no exception. It goes for every man. See, like right there, like how much, how, how much can you take versus how much is your pride worth? Like it's that fine balance between the two. Because yes, you got, you got to swallow your pride sometimes, but there's only so much. There's, there's a certain line, a threshold that you can't cross. And once you cross it, I have to step up and I have to acknowledge it. And I have to re like basically attack against it. Like I can let you step on my toes one time, but if you go and step on it two, three, four, all the, you know, on the 10th time, I'm going to, you're going to force me to retaliate. But if Irv really gave a fuck about y'all like he claims he does he'd Wake him up and make his boy get off them drugs But he just keeps feeding him pills So if that E doesn't kill him Someone from G-Unit will And I ain't bust Dog, I forgot about that line. If Irv Gotti really cares about Ja Rule and the say in the way that he says he does, he would get him off them pills before they kill him like he overdoses on them because you're supposed to care about your friends enough to not put them in harm's way like that. But if they don't kill him, if the E makes him pop off and say some dumb shit, if the E doesn't kill him, someone from G Unit might. And it won't even phase me. That's hard. I ain't buzzed. Dog, I'm talking to you straight if the situation escalates any worse We're gonna lose another soldier to this game Dog. And if I get killed for this rap, it I got a there. million in cash That says I will get you back in Haley's name You ain't no motherfucking Dog, dog, we have to listen to that back because I was talking during the most important line right here. Dog, I'm talking to you straight if the situation escalates any worse We're gonna lose another soldier to this game and if I get killed for this rap, I got a million in cash that says I will get you back in Haley's name. You ain't no motherfucking Can I help you, ma'am? Huh? 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 Yo, that line right there. That whole last like six bars, eight bars where he's like, I'm letting you know that we got to handle it. We got to fix this shit. Because if we don't and it escalates any further, someone is gonna die. That is legitimately how intense it was back in the early 2000s. Like that is not, he is not making that shit up. It was really that bad. And then him literally acknowledging the fact that he might die because of this beef, because of these raps, and he will not let his de death go unavenged. He will get revenge in Haley's name. He's got a million on it set aside. That shit goes hard. Everyone that was new to Eminem beefing because of because of MGK, like that Eminem MGK beef, it was good. It was like it was like head to head like competition, but it was nowhere near. It was nowhere near as brutal as this is. Yo, Psh, dog, I forgot how hard Bully goes. Like in terms of straight up content for dissing. That is that might be one of the hardest tracks during the whole beef. But yo, that's the end of today's video, ladies and gentlemen. If you like what you see, please consider liking the video, leaving a comment down below. If you like what you see enough, please consider subscribing because this is how we get down every time around here on this channel. We break things down in depth. We give you a little history if it's older and I know what's going on. It's just it's all about information over here. You know what I'm saying? Jonathan, once again, man, I appreciate this request because it allows me to get to more Eminem, Ja Rule, Diss and Battle because that was a very important moment in hip-hop back in the early 2000s so i really appreciate this request and i appreciate your patreon membership follow your boy on instagram and on twitter at the third earnest just like the channel links are down in the description below hit up the discord also down in the description below but that's all that i got for you today ladies and gentlemen i appreciate your time and like I always say at the very end go out there in the world love and care for one another love and care for each other and i'll catch everybody in the next video peace